Hello, this is Greg Allison, Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm, coming to you from my home office on 28 March 2019. Two days ago, on the 26th of March, President Donald Trump issued a sweeping executive order to establish security in America for electromagnetic pulse. Uh, this order, which is here on our screen, is called the Executive Order on Coordinating National Resilience on Electromagnetic Pulses. Uh, this order is sweeping. It contains a lot of good measures, but it is missing some critical elements. We're going to go into that. First, I'm going to say, if you've not subscribed to my channel or already, please do. And uh, please uh, uh, bang the update notification bell because I'm going to produce a lot more videos on electromagnetic pulse. And in fact, you can see I have, not there, that's my other channel. You might check that out too, Galactic Gregs. Uh, you can see that uh, I've got quite a few videos in here, grid down, uh, what DHS didn't tell us, uh, grid down causes likelihood, why it's so hard to harden a grid, consequences, what you need to know, and what you need to do yourself to prepare for it. I cover things like uh, prepping, uh, water sanitation, uh, and I go on and on and on, and you can see in here I even color, uh, cover solar storms. There's an increased uh, uh, threat. Uh, proposition on that now. We've discovered they're more likely than we had thought. And many other topics in, in my uh, videos that you may want to see covering a lot of a wide range of topics. So for example, uh, if you're going to survive a grid down, you need to be able to uh, uh, grow your own food when everything happens. You're not going to be able to go to a store. So I've got videos on worm farming in here that can get you prepared for what you got to do to grow your own worms. And I even sell them. So if you go to uh, greengregs.com, you will find, uh, and the links will be below, you will find where I sell the, the worms and you can get your own. So uh, that's right there. That's my website. All you got to do is click right there and you can order worms. And uh, so let's go back to this. Uh, oh yeah, also if you're going to uh, uh, prep uh, before you grow things, you might want to order things uh, for, for long-term survival. Uh, I have a link below to my Patriot Supply for long-term survival foods, a uh, whole year's worth, you know, about $2 uh, a meal. Uh, once you start growing your own, uh, you want to get good heirloom seeds. I have a link below to True Leaf Market. You can grow microgreens in your home. You can grow garden seeds outside with good heirloom seeds. You can get supplies from True Leaf Market. They're a great vendor. They're very timely, very, uh, uh, and very helpful in many ways also. Uh, check out to learn more about Power Grid Defense. Check out my uh, website for uh, you know, the Alabama Power Grid Defense Committee, which I chair. And you will see uh, uh, also on here a links page where you can go in and find out about other organizations, get more data, and find out what you can do to help us secure the grid. So let's go back to uh, this executive order. And the good thing about this is it's very precise in that it covers quite a number of uh, different uh, tests and analysis that uh, it goes into definitions in the first part here. And it goes in to specifically delineate what the different department chairs and, and the Trump administration are supposed to do, what they shall do. And it gives them definitive timelines for analysis, forecast, test, and to come back and say what's actually got to be done to get the job done. And, uh, and the plans will have to execute. Uh, so it talks about department, uh, you know, the, the, the Department of Defense, uh, the Secretary of Commerce, uh, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, the Secretary of State, National Intelligence Directors. Uh, they've all got very specific actions that they are to follow to get this job done. Uh, evaluating approaches to mitigate the effects of EMP. That is a very valuable thing. So I'm not gonna go into everything in here. I'll have the link below. You can read this yourself. But the good thing is it covers a lot of territory. Uh, and what we've got to watch out for though is there are some things that aren't covered here. Now, specifically, you've got to do some studies and some analysis to take the right approach to get the entire grid hard. And that needs to be done. And then action has to be taken. Now, how it's to be funded uh, yet remains to be seen. Uh, yeah, I would hope that that's going to come through. 
this has been fought by the power companies in the past because, and the Public Services Commission has a hard time dealing with their voters if they raise rates and power companies and them are kind of locked in to a thing where it, it's a very gradual uh, deliberate process for raising rates if the burden's put on utility companies. Uh, this could be done through a national infrastructure bill and states could apply for grants against that perhaps. There's different ways that might be covered, but the cost of hardening the grid has been calculated at like the cost of a single B2 bomber. So they have to wring your hands for 12 years or 13 years as we now have over something like that and do nothing when the threat matrix is so high is inconceivable. So given that, Things have to be done, and this is the beginnings of getting it done. What does this specifically miss? What is specifically missing out of this plan is what you do until you get the grid hardened. If you go through here, there's several action item steps of things to do in the order they need to be done in. But these steps take months and years to accomplish. And uh, when you stack them all up, and even once you determine exactly what you're going to do, it takes some time to implement it. For example, if you need to order another high voltage uh, transformer, it's gonna take you 18 months from the time you issue the order to the time you get that thing installed, or actually the time you receive it, pardon me. Uh, so there is uh, lag times involved. And today, uh, I'm gonna to do a video soon about, uh, well, I've already done one on the solar threat. I'm gonna do another one on the magnetic field dropping real soon and what that means to our vulnerability. We're getting more and more vulnerable to grid down, and that's something you need to understand. So uh, whatever you think the cause may be, we're getting more vulnerable from several things. We discovered a threat uh, profile from solar coronal mass ejections is higher than we thought. That's one of my previous videos. And now we're discovering that the, the, the drop in the field strength of our shield, our magnetic field, makes us more susceptible to weaker storms. Like I said, I will make a special video just on that topic. Now, having said all these things, uh, what we have to consider is that the uh, uh, states have a role in this too. That's what's missing. This is a federal government response. What happens with our nuclear power plants, for example, when a grid goes down? You have these spent fuel pulling rods that evaporate 160 gallons of water per minute. They require that water to be replenished. The water is replenished by diesel backup generators. Those diesel backup generators only have so much fuel. When the grid's down, the fuel is not gonna be supplied because the trucks can't roll because they can't get the, the fuel to run them. There's gonna be problems at refineries. Uh, how do you order things? All, all our requisition systems are on the internet. It's all uh, computerized. Uh, how do you keep the trucks maintained to deliver the fuel? They require a lot of maintenance. Spare parts require ordering through requisition systems these days that are all computerized. You can't even buy, go in a store and buy something without them having to put it in their computer. Their inventory systems are computerized. These people don't know what to do with the old book methods that we used to use. And most of these stores are gonna be closed. Uh, the key thing is, and this is where the states come in, uh, because the states have agencies that can help us. They have emergency management agencies, and chiefly, they have uh, National Guard units. And National Guard units use military procurement systems. They do maintain some spare parts, and that can help to a point. Uh, of course, unfortunately, they also use civilian power to run their systems. So uh, the EMAs and the National Guards need to practice for a grid down scenario. They need to practice for what they're gonna have to do when it's nationwide and no cavalry is coming to rescue them and it's not a three day, three week event that it's 10 years maybe. How do they uh, get themselves back up running, provide security for, for the country and maintain the fuel supplies to these nuclear power plant backup generators so that, uh, so that 74,000 metric tons of spent fuel rods don't go up in smoke when the water evaporates down. Uh, I got a video on that, check that out. That's 280 times more radioactive material than is all the nuclear warheads in the world. That's nuts. We've got to maintain that fuel supply and something else needs to be done with those spit rods. That's a problem outside the scope of what this executive order from Trump uh, is looking at. He's looking specifically hard on the grid, but we have a lot of activity that needs to be done at the state level and states can actually start taking action on their own to get the grids hardened. 
power companies can do that. Duke Power is taking the lead to do that because their EMA community did a realistic grid down exercise, not one of these little paper exercises, a lot of them do, and said, oh my God, we have got some issues here. And they brought it up and they socialized it through the ground floor of the, within the company of Duke Power up to the management. And, you know, everybody said, hey, we got to do something. And they're taking action. So the thing is, and where you can come in and help is you can put pressure on your state on your EMA people, call your EMA people, call your sheriffs and whoever. Of course, when you call them, they're going to say, oh, don't worry, your pretty little head. We got it all covered. Don't buy that. That means they're sloughing you off and, and, and just brushing aside. Drill in and, and be persistent. Just form groups. Uh, look on that links page, the powergriddefense.org, and you will find groups that you can join and become involved with. If you're local, let me know. Uh, we're trying to press this. We're trying to get this done. Fortunately, in Alabama, I went down and briefed in Montgomery, the director of EMA in Alabama, and he is totally on board with this. And I'm going to give more about that and what the Air Force is doing through their uh, LeMay Center and other things in a, in a future video. So there are hopeful signs. There's activities that are beginning to take place, but we're not there yet. It takes some time, and we're vulnerable right now. And this key vulnerability, we may face uh, – we may face a strike because if somebody wants to hit us, they'll want to hit us while we're down, while they can, if that's their choice. Terrorist or, uh, hey, we're putting a lot of pressure on Putin, and there's a few years he's going to have a decided advantage on us, like, you know, right around the end of 2020 uh, in certain respects. Uh, so if we keep pushing him, he, he might decide to pull the trigger. I, he ordinarily, he would not want to do that. I will say that. And of course, a lot of people expect the deep state to pull it down. Whatever the case is, we do have people in government and governments who are trying to do the right thing, such as our uh, uh, Alabama director of EMA and, and several other EMA directors. The EMA people really care a lot about this kind of stuff because they are the guys on the ground that's going to have to deal with this. And that's why you should really start with them. Uh, they know they're going to have to face this and work with it. So they want to get this stuff taken care of. And they do have contacts with the governor's office. And what's got to happen is your governors have to get their adjutant generals the National Guard units turned on with the idea that they've got it to get these resources to the nuclear power plants. And they, moreover, security has to be provided for the families of key personnel that are doing these functions, the drivers for the fuel, the security force. I mean, these trucks are going to be a target. You ever see Mad Max? What's Mad Max about? Get the fuel truck, right? Well, it happened in Venezuela already. And Venezuela is as bad as it is, wasn't as bad as what we're talking about here. Oh, it's getting there fast with some movements problems too. They're being attacked, cyber attacked. So these things happen. Uh, the grid has become a target for cyber attacks. It's been happening already. There was a drug gang in Mexico took down a, a state power grid and went in and murdered all the state officials who were opposing them when this happened. So a lot of stuff can go down under the cover of darkness. We don't want to be there. Uh, this can be stopped and we got to push forward to make sure it stops. But if it don't stop, uh, you need to be prepared yourself. And that's where you go to my Patriot Supply and, and, and stock up. That's where you go to buy worms from greengregs.com uh, so you can have fertilizer for your garden without having to go to the store, which won't be there. And why you need to get seeds, get yourself prepared from uh, uh, true, uh, pardon me, from true leaf markets. So uh, all that aside, we can deal with this. Uh, Join organizations, help us. Uh, Trump has got a, a good start here for action items that are very specific, what's got to happen, when it's got to happen at the federal level, and that's what he's got the purvey to do. However, what is missing is what's got to happen in the state level and what's got to happen at the meantime until this grid gets hardened. Things need to be done. They need to be done fast. Uh, you can get involved. You can uh, come in and put pressure on your states. Talk to your state senators, uh, uh, talk to your state representatives that serve in your state house, talk to, these guys are pretty easy to approach. They're usually like the drugstore owner down the road or, or somebody like that. You know, in fact, my state uh, senator is a drugstore operator and his predecessor, uh, which he would be predecessor previously, was an ex-Marine. So um, these people are approachable, more so than the federal officials. So you can talk to them. County sheriffs, you might be able to approach them, or at least a, a chief deputy. Uh, EMA people tend to be fairly approachable. 
Uh, there's EMA directors all over the state. There's a state EMA director typically, but there's a, uh, they have captains in just about every county and borough in the country, county, borough, parish. Uh, Alaska has boroughs and, and Louisiana has parishes. So um, you will find these people, they're typically really concerned and helpful. Uh, get with them, talk to them, explain to them the threat, you know, get educated on this stuff yourself, form groups if you can. But if you just can't do all that, at least try to prepare yourself to be ready if this or many other scenarios come at us. I mean, gosh, guys, we're looking at uh, prospects for economic collapse in the United States. And there's many other kind of natural catastrophes, local, regional, national, or global that could befall us. And any of these catastrophes are things that you need to consider when you're looking at being prepared. Don't get caught with your pants down. Don't be scared. Be prepared, and if you do prepare, you can thrive and survive, or survive and thrive, you know, it's probably the better order. Yeah, I'm not saying there won't be challenges. There definitely will, and a lot of people have defeated us out too. Oh, we're just all that. Well, I got to die eventually. Yeah, sure, but I want to do it on my terms, not immediately. I'd like to be able to have a fighting chance. As long as you got breath in your lungs, you have hope, lots of hope. So the good thing is, there are people pushing to make things happen. This is not a partisan issue. A lot of people will try to make it partisan just because Trump said something. Uh, guys, we all live in this country together. We all live with our power grids. We all live under the specter of what ha would happen if it goes down. So let's pull together across both aisles and of all the political parties, and let's do what's needed to make sure that, our, that ourselves, our kids and grandkids and great grandkids can have a, a reasonable chance for a prosperous future. That at least we can survive this. And, and if it does happen, that we can come out on the other side and pick up and rebuild. And, and to do that, we need to make sure that we're not going to get cooked by the nuclear power plants. Yeah, you know, a lot of people talk to me and say, hey, I live out in the country. I'm good. Really? What's going to happen when all the guy, the hordes in the city come pouring out and beating on your door? What's going to happen? when uh, you're getting fallout from the nuclear power plant 50 miles away or even further. So yeah, we got some things to do here. It is a challenge, but they are actual and can get done. So uh, bear with us. And like I said, if you can't do it yourself uh, in terms of getting involved at the state and national level, if you really can't get it, at least prepare yourself, at least be ready to secure yourself and your family to do what you've got to do. And I've got tons of videos on my site for that. Once again, please, uh, if you've not subscribed, uh, subscribe. Check to make sure that YouTube has not unsubscribed you. They're notorious for that. Uh, bang the update notification bell. If you don't like, because I cover such a wide range of topics, if you don't like some of the topics I put out there, just unclick the notification bell. You don't have to unsubscribe. But uh, I would behoove you to pay attention to all these different topics because it all interweaves. Because to be prepared, you need to, one, understand the threat matrix. You need to, two, be able to understand what you can do to scrounge a living, forging off the wall. And three, you better know when the dust settles how to plant a garden. You need to practice. You should start that now. How to grow stuff. If we have a grand solar minimum and everything gets cold as all get out and crops are filling on the outdoors, you need to know how to grow on the indoors. For that, I've got my microgreens videos. Uh, I've got tons of stuff, and I'm going to put a lot more. I'm really trying to get good information out to you guys, but it all is interleafed. It's all interleafed to help you prepare uh, so that you can be prepared and not scared and survive and thrive and not be a member of the hive. <laughs> so I uh, appreciate you watching, like I said, and uh, uh, subscribe, click the notification bell, and hang in here. We'll make this work. So uh, I appreciate everyone.